Good morning. We are extremely pleased that you are here. It is good to come together for the purpose of co-creating. Do you agree? You are knowing what you are wanting? More or less? You like desire hatching within you? It's the best. That's why you came. You knew that once you got focused here, started mixing it up with others, that your personal preferences would hatch that you would come to personal awareness about what you prefer about this and that and this and that you were so eager because you knew at the time that you made the decision to emerge into these physical bodies that your environment would inspire new preferences and ideas and desires and hopes and dreams and goals but you also knew Ah, that if this time-space reality had the wherewithal to inspire it within you, that it also had the wherewithal to deliver it to you in its fullest satisfactory fashion. Not one of you said, I'll go and I'll find things that I want and then I will accept my lot in life. I'll stand among those who have not, feeling envy and hatred for those who have not one of you said that you all knew that you were the creator are the creator of your own reality and that if an inspiration is born within you that the full realization of it is not just possible but certain but sometimes along your way you sort of got sidetracked from focusing upon what you wanted and started talking about why you didn't like the absence of it. Jerry and Esther sat on the front porch of their house a few years ago in San Antonio in the middle of a drought. Never happens to you, we know. And Esther said, Abraham, what can we do about bringing some rain? And we said, why do you want the rain? And Esther said, because the ground is parched and the bushes are thirsty and all of the little critters out there in the bushes are having a hard time finding water and our gardens are suffering. And we said, you're not answering our question. We're asking you, why do you want rain? Not, why do you not want it not to rain? And it was a startling thing for Esther because at that point early on in our conversations she was confused about what she was actually focusing upon because every subject is really two subjects with wanted on one end of the stick and the absence of what's wanted on the other end of the stick and sometimes without even knowing it you are a perfect vibrational match to the wrong end of the stick and you don't even know that you are because it's a sort of common thing it's a sort of common thing to talk about why the problem is a problem rather than why the solution will feel good or what it is about the solution that you are looking for so it is only when you come to realize that you are vibrational beings in a vibrational universe and that the vibration that you are outputting as a result of what you're focused upon equals your point of attraction so you have this point of attraction this vibrational offering that is swirling around you everywhere you go and law of attraction is answering it and you can tell what you've got swirling around you in terms of this vibrational climate that you create no one else does in two ways by the way you feel the better you feel the better your climate in terms of what it's allowing into your experience and by what's coming into your experience because what's happening around you the conversations you have the people you meet the way they behave when you meet them the way you behave when you meet them everything that is happening in your world to you 
is about one singular thing and that is about your point of attraction practiced or not your point of attraction deliberate or by default your point of attraction that you've prepared deliberately or that is happening because of your response to things so as you are moving through your life from day to day you're mixed up with a lot of things aren't you you hardly are by yourself you are involved with so many others on so many topics at so many levels and in most cases you are having emotional we'll say that first we really want to say vibrational but we want you to hear it you're having emotional knee-jerk responses to life which amount to your practiced point of attraction so the question that we want to put to you right off the bat today as we're getting started is this is your point of attraction which is everything it's the everything it's the only thing that matters to you is your point of attraction deliberate or by default that's the first big question but next we want to ask you is your point of attraction something that you are offering because you've prepared the climate around you by deliberately thinking by deliberately appreciating by deliberately looking for positive aspects by deliberately meditating by deliberately quieting your mind by deliberately awakening and looking for thoughts that feel good by deliberately by deliberately making the best of things by deliberately making lists of things that please you by deliberately rampaging about things that please you is your point of attraction because you've prepared your point of attraction like that or is your point of attraction a knee-jerk response to the email you just got or to something that somebody else said or to something that you've been living or something that you remembered or a grudge you've been carrying around for a really long time is your point of attraction what makes up your point of attraction what's make it what makes it up is the thoughts you think the question is why are you thinking the thoughts that you are thinking are you doing it on purpose or are you doing it by default so we've been calling this gathering for a while the art of allowing because what it really amounts to is you finding a way right here right now where all of your power is right here right now because this is a junction where you meet you where the source energy that is flowing to you can be allowed or disallowed by you are you practicing the art of allowing or are you practicing the art of disallowing the art of allowing what the art of allowing alignment the art of allowing joy the art of allowing yourself to be tuned in tapped in turned on the art of allowing yourself to be in sync with who you really are the art of allowing yourself to be the true extension of the source energy that you are and that you were born to be you're so much more than these physical bodies these beautiful clumps on chairs that's not all that you are you're not even individual you think you are although you're sort of mashed in here together pretty good but you're not you're not even individual clumps on chairs you are consciousness streaming into these physical bodies you are an extension of source energy and as you are here in this body exploring the details and coming to your own personal conclusions of what you prefer you're sifting through what we consider to be optimum variety or contrast that helps you to focus your ideas of who you really are and what you really want into fruition so as you explore unwanted it helps you to know wanted and as you explore wanted it helps you to know unwanted in other words you're synthesizing all of that into your perspective into your opinion but the question that we want to put to you in a way that you'll really hear it today is does your opinion about most things harmonize or resonate with the opinion or the knowledge of the source within you another way of saying that is do your opinions make your heart soar and sing or do your opinions make you angry and frustrated because of course you have free will to feel the way you want to feel about whatever we we're just saying that since it equals your point of attraction we know it's a big price to pay to get everything in the world that you've ever wanted to start tuning yourself to good feeling thoughts we know that's hard and the reason that it is and we are not being sarcastic we are we are being sarcastic <laughs> but the reason that we are being that way is because we want you to understand that while you absolutely do have free will to feel the way you choose to feel that there is something that's going on in your world 
it's this powerful law of attraction that manages everything that amounts to in a word momentum because law of attraction says that which is likened to itself is drawn so if you give your attention to something for just a little while as little as 17 seconds you cross a mark where more momentum ensues measurable momentum hold that same thought non diluted non restricted for another 17 seconds another thought like it joins it and once you cross the 68 second mark we're not kidding you at all about this there's enough momentum going in your vibration for you to notice a difference in your point of attraction so have you been listening to us for a while if you have you've heard a sort of unfolding of a way for you to look at your world at your life that is maybe different from what you've been hearing or understanding before and the reason that we've been presenting it to you as we are is because we wanted to find a way to get your attention to say things that you don't automatically begin to rebuff with the sort of been there done that attitude in the early days as we were talking to Esther about her point of attraction she argued with us from time to time but Abraham it's true it's true I'm not making this up it's true I'm just repeating this injustice that is true that somebody should call somebody about to take care of and we said to Esther on many occasions before we finally convinced her we are not questioning whether it is true because there are many things that are true in your world that you do not want to live and that you do not want those who are living it to live but if we were standing in your physical shoes the criteria that we would use for what we are giving our attention to and what we are using as our object of attention by which we are practicing our point of attraction we would be sifting and sorting through this time space reality looking for things that we want to add impetus to and even more important that we want to bring more and more and more into the realization of our personal life experience in other words just because it's true is not a good enough criteria is it true and do you want it or how about this it has never been in all of the universe and I want it it does not have to have ever been true for you to be the creator of it because you are the creator of your reality not the regurgitator of someone else's not the regurgitator of someone else's Say